According to HaveIBeenPwned.com, at least 9 billion online accounts have been compromised, and that's just the lowest estimate of what is publicly available. This is staggering. Your best bet is to assume that your accounts have had their passwords leaked and are being sold on the dark net, or even floating around in password databases accessible to anyone for free. The worst thing is that when you get hacked, the odds are you're gonna have a hard time holding the company with weak security accountable. You would have to prove you directly suffered some damage due to their security breach. The police is often helpless either because cybercrime is easy to do but hard to track down and it oftentimes crosses international borders. Unless you're a victim of a massive campaign, nobody's going to help you. The good news is that much of this damage is preventable and it only takes a little bit of effort. All you need is a good operation security and a couple of convenient tools. This is the first part in a series of security tutorials I'll be releasing on my channel. It's geared toward a general user and it covers 20% of effort needed to mitigate 80% of threats. Simply put, everyone should be doing these basic security steps. Make sure you watch till the end to follow all of the steps as they are equally easy and important. If you want to support this series and my channel, you can donate to my Patreon and get access to even more exclusive content. Today, we're gonna look at how you can secure your online accounts. The best advice here is to shift your thinking from passwords to pass phrases. Think about a, a, a common phrase that works for you that's too long to brute force and also make them unlikely to be in the dictionary. Admiral Alonso Ghost Penis 420 YOLO. That's pretty good. Right? Let's start with the most important advice. Security is a process. It's not about the tools. You can have strong passwords, second factor authentication, and the most expensive iPhone. But what are you gonna do when you see this? Can you tell the difference? To an untrained eye, there is nothing suspicious. But with good operation security, or OPSEC, you know you always have to check the URL to see if a website is valid, and not just a perfect clone made by a thief trying to steal your credit card information. You need to pay attention to detail. Can you find it? These are real-life examples of phishing scams that millions of people become victim of every day. And if you can't notice the difference before entering your credit card details or logging credentials, you'll be the next victim of a similar phishing attack. If you have a bad OPSEC, no tool can save you. You are going to hell. The first thing you need to know is that nothing is unbreakable and there is no such thing as 100% security. You need to limit your exposure to hackers, but you also need to be prepared when you get hacked. For this, you need to have a strategy. And our strategy is gonna be security by compartmentalization. Or in plain English, you want to avoid putting all your eggs in one basket. It's a mindset that takes into account that you will always face security breaches. Thus, you create compartments so that if attackers access one compartment, it doesn't mean they can access all of your accounts and data in other compartments. Why do you think you need strong and unique passwords? Strong, so that they are hard to guess, and unique, so that even if a hacker guesses a password to one of your accounts, they won't be able to use it to access other accounts. This is a good OPSEC advice that almost nobody follows. The best way to create strong and unique passwords is to use a password manager. Any password manager is better than reusing your passwords. Whatever password manager you choose, make sure it is encrypted. Nothing is worse than storing all your passwords in plain text or with weak proprietary encryption. In an ideal case, we don't want to blindly trust any default options on our phone or browser, so we go for trusted open source alternatives. Bitwarden is super easy to use and it supports syncing across devices very well. Keypass XC has a more simplistic code but may lack some user-friendly features. Make sure you protect your password database with a strong passphrase. This is the only password you'll need to remember. A good way to create a strong, memorable passphrase that's also hard to guess is to create it from something that gives you a strong emotional reaction, especially if it's something funny. For example, Margaret Thatcher is 110% sexy. You don't want this passphrase to be formed from something that can be easily associated with what is publicly known about you. 
and definitely not the name of your favorite song or your dog that everybody knows about on social media. Pro tip, you can use your muscle memory to more solidly implant your passphrase into your memory. Type it dozens of times and do it every day over several weeks. Do this enough times until your fingertips start automatically positioning themselves in line with the keystrokes of your passphrase whenever you are near a keyboard. You can create passwords that are impossible to crack by brute force. Use your password manager to generate truly random passwords. Take advantage of creating as long passwords as your websites allow you to. Use the widest variety of characters possible. Some websites only allow numbers and letters, but if they allow special characters, use them as well. The strength of your password goes up exponentially with length and variety of characters. Good OPSEC tip number zero. Change your passwords at least annually or biannually or every couple of months. Don't be confident in your ability to never be tricked into entering your login details on a malicious website. Don't trust companies either. So that's why I believe that the future is private. They suck at their own security and underpay their own sysadmins to save a few bucks. And when there is a database breach that you'll only hear about months or years after the fact, your carefully created password is out in the open. Good OPSEC tip number one. Do not use the same email address for all your online accounts. If you do that, hackers only need to breach this one address and from there they can reset your passwords to social media, retail websites, or possible even banking. Compartmentalize your online accounts with separate email addresses. Make them hard to guess as well. Emails that go with firstname.lastname at emailprovider.com should only be used for official correspondence. Your password can autocomplete your gibberish address and password for you so you don't have to remember anything. When I sat down with Daniel, a security expert from Safing.io, to discuss digital security, he suggested to use email aliases. I'd recommend you to use an email alias service. So there are services out there that will give you the option to create loads of emails that will just forward everything to your real email address. So then you can use these fake emails kind of to sign up for services. And that will make it much harder for anyone to track you through various online services and see where you have accounts and all that stuff. Because especially in all these password leaks, you can just search for an email and you will get five to 10 accounts on various, various services. And you know, okay, I'm gonna just try to hack one that's easy to hack and use the password from there on, on all the other services. Good OPSEC tip number two, obfuscate your security questions on password recovery. This is a terrible practice that many websites rely on and it's actually a security weakness. You know the drill. I don't know, your mother's maiden name or, or the name of your first pet. Where would we get that information, Art? You certainly would never tell us. This is information that can be found with relative ease just by browsing your social media or any publicly available information about you. You can use your password manager to create gibberish answers to these questions that are impossible to guess. Good OPSEC tip number three. Before clicking on a link, hover your mouse over the hyperlink text and your browser will display the full URL. If it's something you don't recognize as trustworthy, don't click it. Good OPSEC tip number four, harden your privacy. This mitigates open source intelligence that's oftentimes the first step when somebody tries to hack you. OSINT is basically scanning and analyzing all publicly available information about you from, so from your social media, online profiles, LinkedIn, breach databases, or whatever there is that can be known about you without actually breaking through secure systems. Harden privacy settings on your social media so that only people you can trust can see your information. Opt out of all personalized advertising, Google yourself, search for your information online and see what can be found. If there is something you don't want to be known, delete it or try to restrict access. Good OPSEC tip number 5. Use an ad blocker. This doesn't just block ads but malicious websites as well. Do not visit unencrypted websites. Use HTTPS Everywhere add-in and set it to block all unencrypted traffic. If you visit an unencrypted website, all of its traffic including your passwords and contents are visible for everyone. Set your browser to encrypt your DNS to limit your exposure to man in the middle attacks. This can be done by changing your network settings on your browser to DNS over HTTPS. What's even more crucial than strong passwords is second factor authentication. Even if you are on a legitimate website 
and you check the URL and everything seems secure, hackers could have still compromised the website and infected with their own malicious JavaScript or perform many of the middle attacks to steal your passwords and there is no way for you to detect it. This is why 2FA or two-factor authentication is absolutely necessary. Most common 2FA is to generate one-time passwords that expire after a few seconds. You can receive this token through an SMS or you can generate it by an app or 2FA dedicated USB key. SMS-based 2FA is better than nothing, but it shouldn't be considered secure. You should at least try to go for app-based 2FA. Good apps for OTPs are EndOTP for Android and FreeOTP for both iOS and Android. Using these apps is simple as it requires usually just scanning a QR code or copying a secret key. Another option is to use special USB keys to generate OTPs. NitroKey and YubiKey offer pretty affordable solutions. They are both secure, but NitroKey is open source, which makes it more trustworthy. Make sure you securely back up your 2FA or add two different authenticators in case you lose one. But be aware if somebody gets access to your 2FA backups, they can access your account if they already know your password. I asked Daniel how to securely back up your authentication and this was his advice. If somebody gets access into these backups, they can get access into your account. So what's the best way to securely store the backups? Just encrypt them somewhere on a, on a flash drive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Encrypt them and put them somewhere safe. Outside of your main device or like on a flash drive in a drawer? Yeah. If you have flash drives, maybe make two backups because flash drives tend to just die. So to be sure, make just make two and, and put them somewhere secure. If if they're encrypted with a good password, you could also just leave them on the device you're using. But if that device dies and that's your only device, then everything's gone again. So Or if it's encrypted with a good password, you can also upload it to a cloud service that is not protected by two-factor authentication because if you lose your two-factor um, device and then can't access the backup because you need two-factor, well... That's a problem. Think about a, a disaster recovery process and, and maybe play it through once. The most secure authentication is to use FIDO or U2F security key. This is a USB key that you plug into your device or put it close to your phone to verify your authenticity. YubiKey, NitroKey and SoloKey are all relatively cheap and equally secure, with SoloKey and NitroKey being open source. Security keys should be supported by Tudanoda, Google, Twitter, Dropbox, GitHub, and Facebook. More and more websites are adding this feature as it is vastly superior, so keep yourself up to date on this. In the future, this type of authentication is likely going to replace passwords entirely. A good OPSEC tip, do not leave your authentication keys plugged into your device all the time. Remove them after each authentication. As far as this security tutorial goes, my job is done. But be aware this is not exhaustive. You have to do your part and stay vigilant about your own security. Security is like a group immunity. The more people around you are secure, the lower your chances of getting infected. Share this video with your friends or simply pass on the knowledge to others. Please keep the engagement on this video high by commenting and liking so that the algorithm delivers it to as many people as possible. If you want to go further than that, you can support me via Patreon. Remember to check the links for all the tools in the description. Thank you kindly for watching.